Right, so we've got the driver board connected to the CPU board. Test ROM is in and running, and we're just testing out the, the outputs on the PIAs. Now, this one here, um, let me just get the probe on. So we've got a high output of pin 6, a low output of pin 7, 8, 9, 9 is high, and what's that one? 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. 15 is pulsing only low. So that looks like something's a bit amiss. If we look at a, a normal working one, we get a high-low pulse. So what we're going to do is get the schematic page printed out, and we're going to check what's on the outputs of this, and check it's not these, the, the, the devices on the outputs are actually shorting to ground or 5 volts. If the output devices are OK, then it's actually the PIA that's bad. OK, so what I've done now is I've removed IC2, which is this one here, and fitted a socket. Now, if we go back to looking at these pins here, this is hard to do on the camera, but we can see that that one's pulsing normally. That one is pulsing normally. And that one is pulsing normally. So, potentially this PIA is actually good, and it was the inputs of this 7408 here that were dragging them respectively high or low. Uh, so I suspect this IC8 has failed. We can test that separately. Um, but when we, need, when we put the new IC in, we basically need to make sure that the, the, these outputs haven't been damaged and aren't weak now and aren't still being dragged down. But I suspect this is probably okay. So we'll uh, we'll test that some for and see what happens. Okay, I'm using my Leaper 1, as these are pretty handy to have on the bench. I've set it up for 7408, we press the test button, and then we get failed pretty much straight away. So, as I suspected, that is a bad IC. We're going to grab a new one. Right, so we've stuck a, a brand new 7408 in. Um, we can also hear the relay clicking since we removed the original chip, so that was obviously dragging something down, stopping the, either the blanking signal or the, or the signal going to the relay. Um, so again, let's go back to the, the outputs on the PIA. Let's get my camera right. That one's fine. That one's fine. That one's fine. So, yeah, so the, this seems to be undamaged, thankfully, and it was definitely the 748 that was there that had an internal short. Now, I've got this pin here. This one isn't super critical looking, but it seems to be missing its high state. So, again, let's check out what's on the output and see so yeah, what's, what's connected to the output of this pin and see if that's damaged. Right, so I've removed IC4 which is connected to this pin 15 here. Now it looks like we haven't been as lucky here, and it looks like this has been damaged. So let's get the logic probe on. So we're only getting the low pulse and no high. That is indicating that this is out of spec and it isn't actually able to, develop, to deliver a sufficient high pulse. So what we'll do, we'll pick a working pin, so that one next to it there is fine. We've got the other pin with a multimeter on ground. And pay particular attention to the bar at the bottom of the meter there, that's basically swinging from 0 to 4 volts. Uh, that bar updates faster than the display does. So yes, yeah, so we've got sort of 4 volts at your high point and, and 0 at your low point. Let's look at the pin now that is faulty, so this one here. So we get a swing from 0 to 1.2 volts instead. So this one is not driving sufficiently. So we're going to have to remove this PIA, which is a pain in the ass. So appropriately named PIA there. Right, so the IC is out, and I've basically just been giving the pins a polish up with a fiberglass pen, as well as a bit of corrosion underneath here. So that's looking fairly good, and we'll fit a new socket. Still got to fit a socket here, that one's already been cleaned up. Probably just give it a quick wipe with some isopropyl as well on both of these, make sure that there's no corrosion residue. Um, put new sockets in, new components in, and hopefully that's it then. Okay, so just to show you the difference in quality of soldering, these, this one here and this one here are chips that I've replaced recently, and here are the chips that someone else has replaced. Look at the big blobs of crappy solder, ripped up tracks, crap everywhere. I've actually cleaned these up as well. Um, your flux remover, they were all covered in brown crud. There's another one there, ripped up tracks, and another one there, big blobs and ripped up tracks. More of that, so that's how you do it properly. That's not how you do it. Right, so we've got a brand new 6821 fitted in place. Let's just check that pin, that was bad. 
now we're getting correct signals so that's a successful replacement right so i've been testing the special solenoids um, and we've got a couple of issues well three issues specifically um, so pin three pin three is triggering without its switch input being triggered so that one's got a short somewhere um, and eight and nine are not working when the corresponding switches are triggered so I need to chase those out as well alright so I found and replaced yet another bad IC the 7408 here was basically stopping uh, two of these switch inputs working entirely um, so this is six and five um, six is now working so I've just tested that based on, on six output but five still isn't working um, but this is definitely, I basically checked the logic states on this IC and they are now correct. Previously they were basically sticking, uh, nothing stuck to ground. Um, what we need to do now is if we look at the schematics, you can see that we basically need to look for IC9, I think it is, which I think is this one. I just need to look it up in the manual and check the inputs and outputs on this. Well, I've identified IC9 as potentially bad and removed it. And one of the issues we've got to deal with is there's actually a lot of corrosion under here, so we need to get this all cleaned up. Also, the previous person to change this IC has ripped up a couple of the tracks, so we've got to deal with that as well. Um, there's a few ICs like that on this board, as you can see here. Um, there's another one. Yeah. Someone's been hacking away with a soldering iron. Yeah, we'll get this cleaned up. We need to sock it in, and I'm just going to test this. This is a 7402. So I'm going to test that out first. I suspect it is bad. I think it's a fairly good chance. And then we'll put a new IC in. So after getting special solenoids 1 and 6 working after replacing the two ICs, uh, number 5 is still not working. This is the drive transistor for number 5. And as you can see, Mr. Budget, one of the previous owners, has had a go at this and done a really poor job of joining that transistor leg to the actual pad. So uh, I think we'll just patch that up and that should fix that one, hopefully. And that's it now. That's now tested working. So drives five, six, and one have all been repaired. Um, in the repair process, basically going for the solenoid section, we've replaced that, that, and that one. Tip, tip, one twenties. So we had three bad transistors. That's it for this driver board. Now everything's been tested and working. So we had to replace these eight resistors here for the lamps. Um, what else have we got? We've got the PIA and the socket got 7408 and socket, 7402 and socket, 7408 and socket, two 7408 and sockets, uh, three tip 120s, the, basically the header socket here, I think that is everything. Obviously cleaning up and uh, cleaning up and some of the dodgy soldering that was also on here. That's all fully tested, all fully working, uh, as is this CPU board. So uh, we need to put the second CPU board on now with the test ROM and repeat the test again to make sure everything on the CPU board is controlling the driver board correctly for the second one.